Kia ora and welcome to another How To Plus Q&A event. My name is Anna Mari Fanthorpe and I'll be your host today. Today we have Lewis Anderson here from Dazzly Website Builder and he's going to be talking about redefining profit, purpose-based businesses. Now we know um, from market research that profit-based businesses are um, ever evolving. There are more and more of them coming into the market due to the demand by customers wanting to buy products that have some kind of meaning behind the money that they're spending. So I'm really excited to have Lewis uh, talk to us about this today because I know a lot of folks out there are inspired uh, and want to do some good while they build their business. So this is going to be an interesting topic. Now you might be tuning in with us on one of our various platforms. Please engage with us using the comment section chat function or Q&A function. We'd love to have Lewis answer your questions. Now just a quick reminder, if you need some extra support, do contact support at support at digitalboost.co.nz. We're here to help and guide you either with matters on the site or helping to take some of those learnings and put them into action. We'd love to uh, help you get your business to where you'd like it to go. Uh, so without further ado, Lewis, thanks so much for joining us again. Your session that you did last time was absolutely fabulous and I'm really looking forward to what you have in store for us today. Oh, thank you, Anna Murray. Uh, I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, it was a really fun session last time, and I hope this session is, uh, is also really enjoyable and uh, that everyone gets a lot out of these stories. Um, absolutely, absolutely. So I know that you've got, you're probably chock-a-block with stuff for us, so I'm going to let you get started. I'm going to turn off my video, but I'll be here to just make sure that your share screen, everything's working, and I'll make sure everything's running in the back. Yeah, cheers. Thanks, Anna Murray. Okay, so I'll oh, just open the screen share. Please bear with me. Is that looking okay? Looks perfect. Okay, great. Cheers. Okay, first of all, I just want to say um, thanks again to, uh, to both Anna Murray uh, for having me here and for Digital Boost. Um, I think that a lot of the other talks on Digital Boost um, are really complimentary. And I really recommend that um, at the end of this talk, you jump back on and really just take advantage um, of all the great content uh, that is on there. So uh, the topic of this talk is redefining profit, uh, business with purpose. And uh, as stated, my name is Lewis Anderson. I'm a co-founder of Dazzle Website Builder. Um, a bit of background, why should you listen to me? I've got uh, eight plus years experience in the business of custom website, mobile app and software development. Uh, all sizes of businesses and just about all industries. And a lot of time uh, spent on site with the customers in their business, uh, forming a genuine understanding of, of what they do. So I think that's very important uh, in, in everything that you, you do. So we had strong growth for 2020. Uh, we still have strong growth now. And uh, then of course we released as a website builder. So we've gone from a business of a centralized client base in, in Auckland uh, for having customers across the entire country and uh, really hundreds of businesses and, and many small ones. So the structure of the talk, uh, we're going to look at a number of Dazzly customers. Uh, they are located throughout New Zealand and uh, they're making a difference in their communities in, in their own special way. Um, they run profitable businesses in, in the traditional sense, but they also get uh, a lot more profit and a lot more return uh, than what is solely reflected on their financial statements. Uh, now, I will use the term business, however, I want to be uh, very clear in the definition that uh, we're not just talking about businesses, this advice and our talk is certainly not exclusive to businesses. Um, it's just the vast majority of my consulting and my experience has been in advising businesses and of course just the nature of our digital base as well, uh, as well as refer to them as, as businesses in this context. Um, but nonetheless, all of the above organisations require websites, digital bills and um, a way of, of communicating their purpose. So what do New Zealand businesses look like? Um, something you may already be very well familiar with, or if you're just getting into business, you, you may not be so sure. Um, statistics from Statistics New Zealand. Uh, admittedly, this is a slightly dated document from 2017. Uh, I know because we have a copy of it in the office actually from that date. Um, it really just indicates overall that the vast majority of businesses are very small. Uh, in fact, they're, they're what other countries would consider uh, micro businesses. 
Um, that's that's basically the, the overwhelming view of, of the small business here. Obviously, there are some additional stats and, and industry breakdowns as well. Uh, what is profit? Um, profit, it's defined as a financial gain, uh, especially the, the difference between the amount earned and the amount spent in buying, operating, or producing something. So that's the uh, traditional definition. However, uh, some Kiwis see it differently. Uh, just like how we are getting used to defining our own measures of success, uh, I'm also a big believer in defining our own measures and drivers of profit. Um, first of all, it's, it's, it's a great stance to take, as you'll see from many of our customer examples. But secondly, it can be useful for internal decision making purposes and it can add a lot of context to management decisions as well. Uh, so, what exactly is profit? Um, you may define it by the number of trees that you plant, uh, the number of beaches that you clean, and a small plug to ecos.co.nz there, where you can uh, buy a small gift to, to help offset your, your carbon. But uh, a bit of a mission statement. Um, it's really a way for businesses to communicate their purpose. So a business organisation can define the purpose and by the number of people they help, trees planted, square metres of beaches planned, perhaps it's cables of plastic removed from beaches. And, and remember that this is actionable data that can be used to motivate and spur further marketing and content creation efforts in, in a continuous cycle uh, when, it, when it's used um, advantageously. Uh, indirect contribution. So it's very interesting. You, you can have through prominent businesses such as Allbirds, which offer things such as a one-for-one. One. If you buy one shoe, they will also give one shoe. Or you can have other smaller businesses which may do an indirect contribution, such as a percentage of sales um, given to a charity organization, um, such as the Desert Customer Tomorrow's Reef, which supports our sea-based charities. Uh, size doesn't matter. The saying that's come back from, from this survey is that it really doesn't matter about the size of your business or even the nature of what you do. Um, from the respondents we've had, we're only going to feature about six of them, but from the responses we have had, it really does show that regardless of your size or the nature of what you do, you can do it with purpose. So the statistics and facts, uh, we've just highlighted six examples of business owners here in New Zealand who are making a difference in their communities. They're run by strong individuals from all over Aotearoa. They have a strong sense of purpose. They're commercially successful in that they are providing income for their families and their businesses to generate profit. And they're very driven, they're very, very highly motivated. So let's just jump into some examples. First example is uh, it's two organisations in one, so a little bit different, but it's Chains Fitness and Chains Recruitment. Uh, it's run by Kaylin Scudder, who I have had the pleasure of meeting. She came into our office some, some time ago. So Chains Recruitment and Chains Fitness are both based in Odahuhu, Auckland. You can find the basic contact details here. So th this is their website. It, in a sense, they both have so much purpose behind these organisations. That's why I think they're really great examples. Um, with Chains Recruitment, you can see here that let Chains Recruitment help you. So they, they will help workers find placements in construction, warehousing, or many other industries as well. And they're very community uh, driven and focused. So you can see here from construction and recruitment, they're able to put together this little page there, demonstrating some of the areas that they recruit in for other industries, where we get a nice page there, representing Auckland and some of the industries that they also help recruit for. And for Chains Fitness, a great little service overview page which leads into the different types of training and work that they do. Again, putting their, their business space forward, but also mixing it with a, a community message of, of helping individuals. A couple of examples there on strength prep training and a winter challenge. All of this done by Dazzle and all of them helping them to communicate their message. So let's just jump into the um, the, the, the real sort of a meat of the story. So Kaylin is a mother of four, which she has no prior business experience except for working in administration and reception type roles. I, I can't state how common this is. So many individuals, whether they themselves are, are running the operational side of the business or whether uh, they're, they're running the administration side of the business, this uh, that background, having not had the, the experience of running a business, but having had the experience of helping administrate a business, is a very common position that people find themselves in uh, when they are trying to start a website or when they're trying to start a, a website in a business, um, perhaps for their partner's business. So it's, it's quite a common situation we see. Um, both Kaylin and her partner actually started two businesses in the past year. And as for her quote, it's been quite a journey. So why did they start? Uh, both businesses are born from Kayla, Kay, Kaylin excuse me, and her partner's passions. Chains recruitment, uh, the partner had prior experience in rehab management 
and there are many people struggling to find employment in their communities. They both share a strong belief that everyone deserves a second chance regardless of their past. And to change fitness, um, both of them see training as an outlet to relieve stress, clear your mind and get things done. It's something they wish to share with their community and particularly those that have, have come in and out of jail or have mental health or addiction issues. Breaking chains is breaking the cycle in whatever way that might look like for an individual. So as you can see, this is a really great organization that really you know, is defining their success and their profit in an entirely different way. Their primary goal is, is to help as many people as we can. I, I love it. It's so, it's so simple and straightforward. And I think it's, it's very much aligned with what Dacey's goals as well. And since starting the business, they said they've learned so many new things. They've had to learn business as they went along, which is a very common scenario. And they're very passionate about what they do, but they do admit at times that it has been a mission. Now, I think so, especially starting two businesses in, in the past year. Mission statements for Chains Fitness, breaking chains to make a change. For Chains Recruitment, breaking cycles to achieve whatever it is you want to achieve. So their business journey so far during COVID. Now, COVID has had a major impact on both businesses. And you, you can only imagine the, the changing face of recruitment these days and also the changing face of, um, of gyms. It's been a very disruptive time with COVID. So if the gym had to remain closed and they were only able to have a limited number of members in outdoor settings, but the current plan is to try to stay open and to continue to help members of the community meet their full potential. So some stories of individuals that we've helped. Um, without getting into any specifics, a lot of people that the chain recruitments have helped have, have employ have have come from a criminal history, so they're finding it very hard to find employment, and therefore they were struggling to feed their families. Seeing as they wanted to change, they wanted to change and not to go down the same path or direction that, that landed them in jail, they reached out to change recruitment for employment. And they've put them into work and they now feel like they're actually part of society. Their financial struggles are gone or, or going on the path to going away, and they feel like they're now able to maintain the journey on the straight and narrow. Change fitness is how many people lose weight live healthier lifestyles, boost their mental health, and also help them maintain these financial changes in themselves. So I can't speak more highly of this organisation. I think they're really great. I'm glad to be able to, to feature them here in their contact details and give, give everyone a little bit more insight about, about what this great um, organisation and small business is doing to, to help their community and, and help wider New Zealand. The next example is a local electrician from Blockhouse Bay. His name's Nick Van. He's an absolutely top bloke. And you may have seen him in our, in our commercial. Now, note his details here. And uh, Nick, Nick's real testament to the fact that it's, it doesn't matter about the nature of what you do. It's that you can help people with purpose in, in your business. So here's Nick's website, just to give you a quick overview of the business. He serves the Blockhouse Bay and the residential and, and commercial electrical needs. Um, so something that's it's not always immediately obvious, but that you know, electrical services can, can include a wide range of things. And, and, and you'll see from the answers to next questions is that he really does provide peace of mind for, for homeowners and, and business owners in, in a number of ways. Uh, again, some articles where Nick's sharing his knowledge. So that gives a bit of the background. So Nick Van started as the electrical contract in business in 2020. He's worked in an electrician in a large variety of electrical positions in his career in both New Zealand and the UK. My start, he has a passion for electrical work. He's had a long career and his time to take on the challenge of owning his own business as an electrical service contractor. His business goals, he wants to carry out high quality electrical installations while putting the customer first. And, and knowing that personally, this guy really walks the talk. Um, and he's a great individual and he really does, um, he really does do what he says he does. Since starting the business, he's been able to help a lot of people with work on their homes, the local trusted electrical provider. He's pursuing commercial work as well, but he's now pivoted to education, uh, partially due to COVID and for his passion for the subject. Uh, his mission statement is to always provide a caring personal service with the highest standards, with courtesy and professionalism, and always putting the customer first. So the business journey so far during COVID. Uh, he's still taking care of residential work and in some cases contracting out, but uh, as per the above, he's actually pivoted towards education and are now working with a training organisation, often virtually. So the potential value, in my words, that, that Nick has to, to deliver has really increased 10 or 100 fold uh, with the amount of upcoming students he can inspire and educate and pass on his, his skills and knowledge to. 
Um, so I guess in this case, stories of the new age of health. Um, from knowing that for a long time, I know there's numerous instances of, of him attending urgent jobs um, to help help vulnerable people and whatever their situation may be. Uh, whether it's ensuring that a security light works to give customer peace of mind, or just installing a, a CCTV setup at home following a break uh, all, all the way through to the army of people are, are, are certified assurance that any past uh, dodgy installation is now safe, um, particularly for remedial work was required, and additionally that it's certified too. So there's no future worries or concerns. So if you can imagine that you're an elderly homeowner, you may have had a recent break-in. These are things that they're going to leave you feeling vulnerable and, and, and really needing that, needing that support and assistance from. Now, whether it's peace of mind that we work certified, fire safe, or just that there's basic security in place, or even general managed, just getting an oven to work for, for an elderly person who wishes to make their independence. Nick has helped many people in the community, and now Nick is able to help even more people as far as educational work, and hopefully as well inspire some people here by a digital post. But I, I really feel that this case demonstrates that, that anyone with passion can use their skills for good and, and try to make a difference in the world, in, in addition to making a financial profit. So again, it's NVL Chapel, it's a very quality uh, local service provider and, and blockhouse by in the wider Auckland region. And I would really kind of encourage you to get in touch if you need to start a hand from that. Uh, next individual uh, customer example on our list is Thomas Henry from Ra Designs. Uh, we, we work quite a lot with Thomas in Dunedin, so I've got quite a, a bit of insight in, into his work as well. Um, so Thomas is extremely visual. Uh, he loves visual arts and graphics, and this, this will come through in his answers to the questions as well. As you can see, he's built himself a very high quality visual website, uh, representing his, his partners there too. Uh, it's quite an extensive website that he's, he's built for Dazzly. Um, just to take a look at his work here, we've got the gallery here. What I'll actually do is uh, jump onto the browser and quickly quickly scroll through some of this work. It is, it is, it is particularly nice. So just allow me to do the screen share here. So I hope you can see that okay. We're scrolling down through for some of Thomas's gallery here. And you can see there's such a wide variety of work that, that he does for, for individuals, charities, other organizations. And I really wanted to just take the time to scroll through this because as Thomas does this work, he's able to update his website and, and keep this gallery very fresh with, with all the latest things he's working on. And he, he really is working on a lot. So I thought I'd give you a, a small taste of his work there. And we'll jump back into, into the presentation. Now, another page is where he shows off a lot of his community work and discusses and articles about his work about the latest progressions in his business and hopefully serving as an inspiration to others in his community as well. So the answers to his questions is background. Thomas is a, is a naturally very energetic and creative person. He's extremely passionate about creating graphics and visuals. He uses his creativity to create cool things for clients and that's really just the beginning of what he does. His work covers painting, drawing, video, photography, digital media, art, anime and more. He loves technology and is proud of the fact that he's turned his passion into career. Uh, a small quote from Thomas is that graphics and visuals can represent so many different things depending on how you look and interpret it. I, I know this guy, he's so passionate about his work. Uh, why start the business? Uh, Thomas had a strong personal and family driver. He really wanted to be present in his son's life during his younger years. So the ability to be an active parent while also challenging himself to start this business. But uh, looking back, this is the best thing he could have done. Uh, Thomas's immediate goal is to continue to grow and continue to live in. So both in a personal and a business sense, and to be the go-to person for people to come to for quality design and custom print services. Um, personally, I think Thomas is doing a great job of that. He really is an up-and-coming designer in South Island, and we are very proud to, to work with him. So business goals, as he continue to grow personally in the business, and since starting the business, uh, he's found it's been good. He finds himself quite busy with plenty to work on, and there's a range of skills that are, are difficult to get from one practitioner. And because he relentlessly works hard to market his work and help push people and ideas forward. His mission statement, to add light, color, and energy to people's lives. So the business journey so far during COVID. 
So Thomas has recently moved to a new larger location. He's ready to expand and make things bigger. Regarding COVID, the largest impact on his business is, is really how it's impacted his fan cap. Using his wide range of skills wins in business from customers as they like to deal with a single point of contact, but he always keeps an eye and an ear out to hear the latest happenings and responds accordingly. Thomas works from home and serves his clients primarily in the South Island, but also the whole country. So travel hasn't been an issue for him. Uh, plans for the future, set up communication, hire people and become a more prominent well-known designer in print business and get some new and improved gear to handle the larger workload. A scale up volume and take more jobs. That's, that's exactly what we want to hear. Story has been for jobs and things now. So, um, you know, having talked to Thomas a lot over time, I do know that there are many instances where Thomas has helped individuals, uh, whether it's for uh, just kind of building or pro bono work. Um, because the range of his work is, is very diverse, there are naturally um, a lot of avenues and tools that he can use to help people. So I know in our business partnership that he's helped a lot of people in need and he has a real make it happen attitude. So he's, he puts on uncountable, really uncountable hard yards at his own expense to help those in need. So one particular job that, that does come in mind um, when we asked Thomas about this was that um, actually on a number of occasions, um, Thomas has approached and asked to use his skills to, to really touch people's hearts and, and help lessen the pain in a real way. Um, Thomas has done paintings and, and drawn portraits of friends, family members and, and pets that have recently passed away. And I'm sure we can we can all relate to that you know, and, and know how that would help in, in a time of need. Um, additional information he'd like people to know. So getting into business isn't easy. Uh, it's very challenging and it takes up a lot of your time. You have to be smart. You have to continue to learn and always evolve. You have to keep up the latest moves and trends and network as you won't be doing more on your own. Uh, Tom's been in business for about three years and he's really only starting to see the benefit now. So it's, it's a very long marathon and not a sprint. Yeah, Thomas is blessed to be in the position that he's in, which is to work for himself at home. But it also takes a lot of time and hard work to be able to do this. There are always a lot of tough decisions to make, but if you're passionate, you'll make it work. And, and I personally, I fully endorse those statements. I, I think it's so true that it is such hard work and it is, it is a very long marathon, it's certainly not a sprint, but it is a marathon that we can all run. So again, it's Ra Designs, uh, located in the lovely Dunedin, uh, but servicing just about the entire country. And uh, yeah, Thomas, a uh, really good bloke and definitely someone who keeps a lot for the community. Next example is an uh, exciting business from here in Auckland, uh, Pretty Little Cupcakes. Uh, run by Chef Rana, who has made a, a lovely website on Dazzly. Uh, it's very photogenic and since the, uh, the goods look absolutely lovely and it always uh, gets a little hungry when you do look at the website. So just up in here, we've got some lovely photos on the homepage. Uh, a great product display there. Uh, Chef Rana has, has such a great range of products. There's, there's always something new every time you look back and she's constantly innovating and uh, working and, and making the business better. Here's that example, you can order a six pack. So pretty little cupcakes, uh, background. Chef Rana is, is a mother of a 10 year old. She loves being creative, whether it's redecorating or just simply drawing a picture. She's of Fijian Indian ethnicity, but she's born and raised in New Zealand. She is self-described queen of the house. The oldest and only daughter with three younger brothers. So why start the business? Uh, Chef Rana always found herself uh, to be making goodies for friends and family. And when she lost her full-time job during the first lockdown, she still found herself picking for others. Uh, therefore, she turned her passion into a source of income. Uh, she's still fairly new to the business side of things, but the goal is to get bigger and better uh, with this small business. And uh, as far as I understand, she's doing very well as, as she's booked out to the end of the year. So that really is a sign of a, a growing business. Since starting the business, it's been a roller coaster of up and downs, uh, but Chef Reiner accepts that's the norm when you're starting up anything in general. So it's a really good attitude. Uh, she feels blessed by the amount of support from, from locals and, and even international customers. Uh, her mission statement, uh, she wishes to be known for her unique custom-made cupcakes because the detailed work is what makes the treat special. Uh, she'll achieve this through an expand, expand, expand attitude. So the business journey so far during COVID, um, being a non-essential service, they did have to close during lockdown. Uh, it's unfortunate, but also something that Chef Rana understands, supports, and is very thankful and, and grateful for the support from, from government and all other organisations during this time. Stories of individuals she's helped. Uh, well, naturally, a tasty, presentable product uh, will put a smile on anyone's face. 
Uh, she's helped a number of individuals, charities, and not-for-profit organizations in her very short time in, in business. Uh, she firmly believes that, that all help is, is something done from the kindness in our hearts and a genuine desire to help others. Um, she understands that help in any form, in any way, is appreciated by those that struggle. And, and importantly, that we all struggle from time to time. And it's also something I, I think needs to be recognized more as well. But again, it really demonstrates that anyone with a passion their skills go and, and try to make a difference in the world, and make a financial profit and, and a non-financial difference as well. Additional information she like people to know that Pretty Little Cupcakes NZ specializes in making custom-made cupcakes. However, they also offer a range of delicious treats for every occasion out. Uh, most items are customizable to suit individual preferences, and they also cater for dietary requirements, which um, is really good because I know many food vendors in this space are just a little behind the ball on this. So again, Pretty Little Cupcakes, it's a great business here in Auckland. Um, of course, it can be ordered to just about anywhere in the country. Now, Kakiri Kudu. I'm um, really glad that we're able to feature Kakiri Kudu amongst the other respondents. Um, Kakiri Kudu is the business that uh, I helped get online uh, through Gasly. They require a, a bit of hand holding, but nonetheless, we, we got it there and we're very proud to support them. They're really just using business. So, Kakiri Kudu, uh, this is their website. They are a lice and knit treatment and prevention clinic, and uh, they help families, schools, and uh, just about everyone with knit and lice tr treatment and prevention. So let's have a quick look at the website here. Uh, it's really good because it details sort of what you can expect in the procedure. I think there's a lot of unknowns and um, a lot of uh, perhaps misconceptions. But really, it's, it can be quite a straightforward process. And I, I know from experience that she can, can take through and make the, the process very easy. And some great testimonials to show there as well from the community. Well, let's jump into the answers. So a bit of background. Um, from Cheryl and her family. They're, they're a family that went out and they searched for something different other than clocking in and out of work and, and answering to the boss. They followed a path of sovereignty and, that, and they met a beautiful young lady along the way who was a successful client in Australia. Uh, it's non-government based and they needed a service that was totally safe for the community and also natural. So, so her husband and, and her decided to give it a go and, um, and it was really they had everything that they believed in. So, so why start? Um, growing up with heat lice and then having children with the same problem now, it, it really made them think, this problem has been around for many years and it's going to be around for many more to come. Uh, Cheryl did research in the local schools in the area and found that actually the heat lice are worse than ever before. And not only that, but some of the products can be harmful and they still can't actually get rid of the PC critters at the end of the day, um, even with some, some various treatments. So the goal at the end of the day was to get out there and help families that have been battling this problem since the beginning of time and making the whole experience kind and friendly to the people and the environment. So it's a, it's a free treatment, excuse me, it's one treatment, one sitting, it's 100% guaranteed removal of lice and eggs and some free education on how to keep the lice at bay and then a follow-up appointment seven days later. And this is what they stand by and they're proud of what they can achieve. Since starting the business and the journey so far, so the clinic uh, was a success and they're helping families, which is the main goal. However, due to unforeseen circumstances, they did have to temporarily close the doors. Now, Dazzly, we've worked with them, we've helped keep the site running, and then basically helped them to, to keep getting some, some contacts from customers to, to sort of help keep things sticking over. Um, they haven't changed the way they run the actual clinic since COVID hit, but they're able to do mobile at the moment. Um, is they don't have the building, but again, they're helping to change that here in the next year as, as things progress. Um, but they'd also like to implement hairdressing and beauty therapy alongside the clinic, as that all the parents have to do while waiting for the, the child to finish their treatment. So stories of individuals that help, there's, there's so many stories in this case, um, but well, one of them we picked out is that they had a school contact uh, them, as they're a student unable to attend school due to infestation, and their mother is a bit really beside herself and, and not sure what to do next. Uh, they brought the young girl into the clinic and she was very withdrawn and a bit sad due to some, some of the bullying, bullying she had unfortunately experienced. Um, but within two hours, her head was cleaned, washed, moisturized and resulting in a very happy, bubbly little girl with lots of hugs given. Uh, another girl arrived with her mum. She sat in the chair and after a, a lot of coaxing, she, she said that she was ready to begin, but she was worried that, that the procedure might hurt her. And, 
at the end of the day, she was able to give them that comfort and reassurance to, to in this case, the patient, the young girl and the family, that it's not going to be her. It's totally pain-free. And of course, two hours later, she's smiling and laughing and keen to come back for a follow-up appointment. And these are really just a few examples as to why Cheryl and her family love doing what they do and how much this service is really needed in the communities. And, and I know um, that they have delivered the service to a number of communities and they make a really big difference um, with, with their services. So looking to the future, um, they're going to be introducing a barter system into the clinic as they know times are tough out there and, and a little bit crazy and uncertain with everything happening in the world. So, so if families can't afford the treatment, they will try to work something out. And after all, they are all about the community and helping each other out. And that's Kagiri Kodu with the contact details there at their very recent new address. Now, there are many other customers that we also wish to feature and, and many other stories that we hopefully will be able to share in future presentations. But we selected these examples. We think it, it represented quite a broad range of services, customer demographics, and, and the way that they are helping the community. So uh, just a very small bit on what we do at Dazzly to help the community. So in, in short, we our entire product and service, the vision for it is really to give people a high quality website and, and allow them to take control of their website destiny. Now, in order to do that and help the vast majority of people, because the majority of businesses are small, we have to make that proposition affordable. And that's really what we've been able to achieve with Dazzly. Um, we also offer discounted subscriptions, or in some case, free subscriptions, if you're a community organization or a real business that is, that is driven by purpose. Um, we also provide understanding and support for small businesses, particularly in their first year, and they find it hard. Um, sometimes they, they may not be able to pay the bill or just may need a little bit of business advice and, and things to get them back on the right track, and we're always happy to give that free of charge. Um, additionally, we provide them with resources, um, which I have to admit Digital Waste also is doing a fantastic job of. And um, we have a few sustainability things, uh, just some things that we do to help the community. For example, we, uh, being developers, we, we drink quite a lot of coffee. Uh, we ensure that really every grain of that coffee is used and put back into community gardens, which we then ensure we have vegetables um, delivered, albeit on a small scale, um, to home, to, to households in, in Newland, Mount Mosville, and, and some other West Auckland locations. And these are just some of the things we do. Uh, we hope to elaborate a bit more on our sustainability and community efforts in the future. But for now, um, being a small but fast growing company, we try to do all we can to help the community directly and indirectly. So what is your definition of profit? Um, ours is the number of people we help and, and how long we can help them for. Um, this aligns our success and our customer support objectives uh, with our customers' goals as well. If, if they're successful, they will be able to use the service for longer and, and will be successful as a result. So it's really good for, for getting that focus and, and aligning uh, certain departments as well. So I guess if you haven't started a business yet, uh, how can you figure out what you really want to do in life. And I, I think I'm, I'm not an expert on the topic. It's, it's important that you, you ask yourself a question that you, you probably haven't been asked in, in quite a while, and that's, um, what do you want to be when you grow up? I'd say forget your limitations and, and your economic constraints and, and think back to when you were a child uh, before the drama started and um, just think of really what did you, in essence, want to do when you grow up? Use that as a starting point. It, you know, take, take some time out later in the day and actually think about this. It's, it's, a, it's a really good way for a starting point to find out what, what you are genuinely passionate about. And then when you've found that, ask why. Why are you passionate about that? Why is it that this is what you, you want to do if, if you could do anything? And uh, many people will find that, that they have passions for subject knowledge and, 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 and work and that they can carry that out as a business owner. Um, it's also very important, um, you know, based off these, these stories and, and from my own experience, that, that you really ask yourself, well, what does it mean to be a business owner? Um, you know, it's, it's not all about fun and, and flashy things and profit. Um, you know, you just look at the customer responses here today, there's, there's a lot of responsibility. Um, it, it's, it's very hard, especially in your early years. Um, especially as well if you're figuring out the model and, and that can take time. Um, you're probably your main profit in those early years is going to be the satisfaction of a job well done for your clients 
and just the satisfaction of of having that that bit of freedom of, of being a business owner. Um, you'll learn a lot from doing it. You'll learn a lot more uh, working for yourself than you are working for someone else. And um, as per many of the respondents, it's worth it. Um, it is worth it. If, if you can pull through and succeed, you can have a bit more control on, of your life and your financial freedom. And it really is worth it, but it also really is hard. And as you can see, it's a picture of Mark Cuban here. And I uh, really hit the quote from him is that I'd rather be earning 50,000 working for myself than 100,000 working for someone else. And I, I think if you reflect on that comment, there's, there's a lot of truth there and, and, and think about some of the examples of, of our customers as well. So if you're thinking of starting a business, uh, we have to suggest some quality service providers that we use. We're happy just to assist or point in the right direction, um, regardless of what your inquiry is, website related or not. Uh, we have many years of business experience under our belt and we are really happy to refer you to other quality uh, local New Zealand providers. Uh, in addition to that, uh, just came in my inbox this morning from, as you can see, there's help available um, through the government for business advice or for the implementation grant. So please do take the time to check that out. And obviously there's a ton of advice from Digital Boost and the Digital Boost Alliance and other quality service providers that, that are making themselves and, and their knowledge and, and content available. So again, I would really encourage you um, to take full advantage of that, upskill your business, upskill your, your digital acumen and, and absolutely get the most out of it. Because like it says here on the page, we really are all in this together and we really need to help each other as New Zealand businesses. Um, so let's have a look. I guess it's just to look at the main takeaways from the customer story. So I guess for me, the main takeaways are that anyone can do you know, can start a business and, and do what they want to do, regardless of their background, you know, prior work experience. This is something you can do and you can do and you can figure it out in the way. Um, there's various reasons that people are motivated to start doing businesses and help other people. Um, for example, their passion for the subject and maybe very family driven. It may be the case that they're community driven. They may have spotted a problem that needs to be solved or it's um, just that they want to prove they've, they've got more to do after a long career. And um, I really think that, you know, you should take the time to think about what you, you want out of life and what you're really passionate about and ideally find a way to start or be it with small steps um, to work towards being able to do that. You'll get a lot of satisfaction and uh, you'll learn a lot, um, regardless of whether financially you will fail or succeed. You will learn a lot um, working, for your, working for yourself. Now, to hear. So yeah, I guess it's, it sort of wraps it up. I think there's a lot of uh, more storytelling than, than a particular insight from, from my side of the coin for a better phrase. But um, I just want to say thanks again to, to Digital Press for giving this opportunity. Um, we really appreciate it and uh, I'm more than happy to answer any questions um, either about the survey or particular customers or perhaps things that are specific to your situation. And um, yeah, if you are thinking of starting a business, we are, we're happy to help even with websites or referring you to, to other quality providers. But yeah, that's um, that probably about wraps it up. You know what? I just loved hearing about all of those businesses, Lewis. What's some fabulous businesses out there and what a lovely thing to do for those folks to promote them here on Digital Boost, you know, share their story and how they have gone to reach towards their dreams through their business model and the way that they're making their business work for them and their family and the communities around them. Um, so a big shout out to all of those businesses. And I actually wanted to just say that we have a Facebook community page that on Fridays and well, throughout the week, you can, you can, talk to folks who are on digital boost and stuff like that, you know, share, share your story. It's, um, it's a real community type of feel. And we also allow you to promote your business on the site on Fridays. You can put up, you know, if you're running some sales or you're running some deals and you want to promote it, pop it up on the digital boost Facebook community page. If you're not a member yet, join it. Uh, it's a great way for you to get your businesses out there as well. And let us know what kind of deals you're running so we can help to promote all of the small businesses here in Aotearoa. So do take advantage and um, how lovely. And I know that you guys, um, Lewis, you're, you and your team are really great at working with small businesses here in Aotearoa and helping them to have a real solid plan 
and put that into action. So we appreciate you coming on here and sharing your knowledge and some of the work that you've done with these folks. Uh, it's quite inspiring. So I'm just gonna jump and have a look and see if we've got any questions sure. on some of the other sites. Um, but it looks like everyone's just kind of intently watching. I can see people on Facebook as well, um, tuning in there and just kind of checking out what you had to say. But I want to thank you again for taking time to come on today, Lewis. I don't think we have any questions. I think we're good. That, yeah, yeah, it's pretty uh, self-explanatory. Yeah. yeah, I think so too. I think if obviously if there's any situation um, anyone might like to discuss privately, um, I'll make myself and some of our staff available on the RE100 number. More than happy to answer any questions. But um, I think in this case, the, the examples speak for themselves a bit. And I hope it's uh, given everyone a bit of motivation and, um, yeah, just a bit of emphasis to, to get things started. Um, and kick it off in 2022. Yeah, I think, you know what? This was such a great reminder that there are so many beautiful things happening out there in the world and what a lovely time of year to, to kind of talk about these, these things. So thank you so much, Lewis, for your time today. I know we've got sessions lined up for the new year and I'm looking forward to that and doing some more work with Dazzly Website Builder because you guys are a real stellar team and uh, always doing good work here in Aotearoa. So thank you. You know, thanks, Anna Maria. And again, just thanks for the opportunity. It's great to be able to put this stuff out on digital posts. And um, yeah, I, I, I regularly look at that Facebook page. I know a lot of other people do as well. So, you know, I really would encourage you to, um, to as you said, get the posts out there and um, get the word out because there's so many great things happening and yeah. um, it can help motivate us all to, to do better. Right. Like promote your business on the Digital Boost community um, Facebook page. Why not? Absolutely. You know, like it's a free link, tool link, for you. Link back we, to your website. It's a good, it's a good link back. That's right. Good backlinks. It's going to be, yeah. So, hey, and do connect with us. I know that some folks use LinkedIn. Like, reach out to us and let us know, hey, I, you know, I'm a digital booster. Just wanted to, you, this is my business here. We love following your stories, don't we, Lewis? Yeah, absolutely. And, and like Thomas Henry from, from My Design said as well, it's, and I found it to be very true. Um, you know, it, it is a marathon, it's, it's not a sprint. And That's right. like, like all hard things, it, it pays to get advice and it pays to people who talk to people who are either on the same journey or have been there and done that. So networking is, is really important. Now, the nature of that, you know, seems to have changed a little bit with, with you know, bad things being a bit more virtual, but um, that's okay, just, just adapt and um, do network. It'll help get your word and, and your name out there more. And um, that'll be, you know, an exponential way for you to find uh, new leads and opportunities and uh, ideally people to help. Mm, wonderful advice. Wonderful advice, Liz. Thanks, as man. usual, as usual, have a, um, we'll say kakite now. So kakite, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Um, looking forward to tomorrow's session. So hopefully I'll see you all there. And um, yeah. Stay safe. Thanks, See, you. See you. Thanks, everyone. Bye.